Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings from the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church at 106 County Road 1111, Atlanta, Texas, zip code 75551. I am your host, Pastor Alistair Maxey. To the Shiloh Church family, may God bless you. May God keep you in my prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come to you once again with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you for knowing their fellowship, know their friendship, Lord. A brand new day we've never seen before. A day that well the promise not guarantee, but only because of your grace and mercy. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Father God, bless all the sick. Father God, those that are downtrodden. Stop by the hospitals, the institutions, the jailhouse, Lord, those that are homebound. Father God, they wait for someone to see them, Lord, but let them know that you're there, Lord, and for that we say thank you. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for this day. Father, we thank you for another Sabbath day. Let us, Lord, help us to keep it holy, Lord. And bless every preacher, pastor, going to bring your word today, Lord. Give them something to say to help them, Father God, and to also help someone on their path, Father God, to you, a day of righteousness. That, Father God, we'll be with you one day in that heavenly home above. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Father God, we thank you for traveling mercies, Father God. We left our home this morning, headed to our special destination, Father God. We thank you that you move everything. Dangerous out of our way, Lord. Put your head of protection around us. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Lord God, we thank you most of all for your daughter and son, Jesus, and what he did in the old rugged cross, Lord. They to bear all our burdens, that we may have a right to the tree of life. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Lord God, bless all those families that lost loved ones, Father God. And during this pandemic, well, not only during this pandemic, Father God, for natural causes, Father God, that you just touch their hearts, relieve their minds, give them clarity, and give them understanding. For that, Lord, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today will come from the New Testament, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 15. Amen. And verse 15 reads, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to thee which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. May God bless his word. Like you for a subject for just a little while, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. We're still on the topic of creating a healthy church, and to create a healthy church, we must strive for peace on this, this earth. And as one of Christ's disciples, we must let that peace begin with me and with you. Amen. But church, I've learned in my almost 64 years, you got to want peace in order to get peace. You got to want peace in order to have peace. You got to want peace in order to make peace. I've also re realized and recognized that everybody don't want peace. Some folk enjoy chaos and confusion. Y'all ain't going to pray for me. But Lord, let there be peace on earth. And Lord, please let it begin with me. I want to cover this entire passage if I can. I will skip a few scriptures. But we're going to start with Colossians chapter 3, begin with verse 1. Verse 1 reads, If ye 
then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Now, church, to rise with Christ, you must first die with Christ. Amen. Which means you have to have been freed from sin and turned to a new life, leaving behind old ways, old habits, old vices, old interests, and old sin. In other words, church, there is some things you got to put off and some things you got to put on. Some things you got to put off and some stuff you got to put on. Y'all going to pray for me today? Therefore, if you call yourself a child of God, your thoughts should be like God's thoughts, which are pure. Not reflect the teaching of this troubled world. Your thoughts should reflect the thoughts of your Father God, who is in heaven, seeking things from above, which is love, peace, and joy. Lord, let there be peace on earth. And Lord, please let it begin with me. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at verse 2 and verse 3. It says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. All believers should be directing your mind toward God. For the things of this world are temporary. Our help comes from above. That's from God. So if you're dead to sin, church, your thoughts should not be full of sin. Y'all ain't going to pray for me. I said if you're dead to sin, your thoughts should not be full of sin. If you're dead to sin, then your thoughts should not be full of lust and hatred. If you're dead to sin, then your thoughts should be toward God and not toward destructive things, especially to another man. Amen. Destructive thoughts and destructive things toward another man is not of God. For it is not God's way. Because verse 4 tells us, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So if you intend to stand beside God and Christ when he returns, church, you must get your life together now. Verse 5 says, for these are the things that you put off. But see, you won't put them off because you don't want them anymore. Verse 5 says, modify. Therefore, your members, which means your mortal body, which are upon the earth. Modify means to crush or destroy. So put death to all sin in your body and make a new life in Christ. Somebody say thank you. So destroy fornication in your mortal body. Destroy uncleanness in your mortal body. Destroy inordinate affections or extravagant affection in your mortal body. Destroy evil consumption, which simply means lusting. Destroy that. It shouldn't be in your body. Destroy covetous, which is idolatry. Lord, help me today. Then we will have victory over the flesh. And that's what you want, victory over the flesh. So you can't live for the flesh and by the flesh. You must have victory over the flesh. Because none of these things shall enter into heaven. Somebody say amen. Why should we destroy these flaws in our body? It's because verse 6 tells you, For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Lord, help me. It said the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. I said the wrath of God y'all ain't hearing me, comes on the children of disobedience. Now, actually, it's the law of reaping and sowing. God has to bring a wrath on you 
if you don't do as he asks you to do. Because God cannot abide in sin. But you choose your own part of that. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. When you choose to display disobedience to God's law that governs you, then you are disobedient to God. You must reap the things you say and the things you do. Lord, help me. I said reap the things you say and the things you do. Now, skip down to verse 8. It reads, But now, you also put off all these things. Anger. Wrath. Malice, blasphemy. Oh, this is a good one. Feel the communication out of your mouth. Well, I don't curse. I didn't say you curse. There are more things that's filthy than curse words. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said? There are more filthy words than just cuss words. I hate you. Oh, that's a filthy word. I don't like her because, oh, y'all ain't talking to me. I don't like him because, let me explain something to you. God don't care what political party you belong to. Oh, y'all ain't. He's talking about politics. No, I'm trying to show you something. You know why? There's only one party. God is rooting for his party. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I said there's only one party that God is rooting for, that's his party. He wants all his children to have the same beliefs as his. Not your beliefs, not my beliefs, but his beliefs. Y'all got the thing wrong. God is the commander and chief of us all. No other belief matters to God. Don't stop praying for me now. For us to have peace on this earth, peace must begin with me and begin with you. Brother Terry, there should be no anger or malice in your heart. There should be no filthy words coming out of your mouth. That ain't what Matthew said, that's what the Bible said. Deacon Allen, verse 9, says, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Brother David, since the old man is all a person was prior to salvation, me included, with his worldly thoughts and his sinful acts. But since all this was removed by conversion, by being born again, one should not be a liar. Because claiming to be a disciple of God, Jesus said, who I am is the truth. So if you say you are a new creature in Christ, then act like one. If you say you're a new creature in Christ, then be one. Thou shalt not kill simply means thou shalt not kill, period. Thou shalt not steal, mean thou shalt not steal, period. Thou shalt not lie, then thou shalt not lie, period. Well, it's just a small, well, a lie is a lie. I don't care what size you think it is. For when it comes to God, there are no gray areas. Y'all ain't praying for me. I said when it comes to God, there are no gray areas. You should walk in the image of him who created you, and that is God. Because verse 10 says this, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him who created him. Church in Christ, we are a new creation. In other words, the new man is the person we have now become after being born again. Sister Alicia, Sister Melanie, and Sister Amanda. I now have a new nature. 
I now have new values. I now have new aspirations. And I now have a new lifestyle. I am forever being renewed. So you can't be renewed and then just stop. Thank you there. You're always comfortably being renewed to attain a mature knowledge of Christ. You must always be renewed in Christ. So Lord, let there be peace on the earth. And Lord, please let it begin with little old me. Lord, help me. Verse 12 simply says, Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vow of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Church, these are the fruit of the Spirit. These are the things that are important to God and should be important to you. These things are the attributes God is looking for in man. Man don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, but oh, God does. And only God can do that. Sister Priscilla, Brother Jonathan, put on. Lord, help me today. Put on. Take on. And assume all the virtues and all the qualities of God. God said in verse 13, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have quarreled against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you forgive them. Sister Godfrey, the only way is God's way. The only way to bring peace to this earth is by following God's plan. <clears throat> the only way is God's way. The only way to bring peace to this earth is following God's way. Because God is peace. God is love. And God is joy. The enemy can't bring you peace. Nor can the enemy bring you love. Nor can he bring you joy. Because the enemy knows not love, he knows not peace, and he knows not joy. Y'all ain't praying for me still. Some of y'all think I'm serving joy. No, you're not. You serve in hell on earth. Lord, help me today. You serve in hell on earth. So why serve hell on earth then die and go to hell? Somebody talk to me. So where you don't see love? And where you don't see peace, and where you don't see joy, there's no God in the mix. I said, there's no love, no peace, and no joy, then there is no God. Somebody help me now. There is no God. But verse 15 says this. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to thee which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and amongst one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. So church, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Sanctified and Holy Ghost feel peace. Let the jaw of songs put grace in your heart. Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled songs. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ while giving thanks only to God. Lord, let there be peace on earth, and please, Lord, let it begin with me. Because Jesus Christ gave peace, love, and joy to us all with three nails and a cross. 
And he hung there bled and died. And he allowed himself to be buried in Joseph's brand new tomb, tomb, only because he wasn't going to stay there very long. And he lays there all Friday evening and all Friday night. All day Saturday and all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning he rode all power. And I thank God for Jesus. And I thank God that he rose Jesus from the dead. Let there be peace on earth. And Lord, let it begin with me. That's why I say, touch me, Lord. I said, touch me, Lord. Shine the light from heaven on my soul. So if you find anything that should be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. The door of the church open. Would there be one today that is willing to come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That is willing to come and be in peace and love and joy with God? Would you come today? God loves you so much. He's been waiting for you. If you just come, my God, let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word of God. Father God, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus. And what he did in old rugged cross, and he bowed out our burden, Lord, that we may have a right to the tree of life. Dear Lord, we say thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May God bless you, and may God keep you, is my prayer to the next time.